What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. How you doing this evening? I am finally coming back down, and it's finally hitting me what happened yesterday yesterday was literally like a trance and it was like an out of body experience because i wasn't really i was so exhausted i didn't know which way was up i was literally running on fumes and <laughs> literally did not know when i got home how i was still functioning i really just didn't and um it was crazy it was crazy but it was cool and thank God it was on film that I could step back and I could see it and enjoy enjoy the situation and everything that happened. That was a great experience with Dak and everything else. It was still kind of crazy <laughs> um, with the Amari Cooper situation. Amari was there yesterday. And however it happened, uh, it's just crazy. You know, I, I'm, it, it's, I wish the best for Amari Cooper and things. And I don't wish ill on anybody, um, but it's crazy. The whole thing was crazy. Um, I, I, I know what to me this is what I believe happened. The emotion of leaving the Dallas Cowboys, going to the Cleveland Browns, the things that were said about him that I'm sure he does not feel that were honest and true. Nobody wants to hear bad things about themselves, and especially. You know, you don't want to hear this on all of the shows on TV and in the newspapers. Oh, who reads the newspapers? But all of the shows on TV and the internet, Mari Cooper, you know, blah, blah, you know that, that's hard. You know, and, and being in the public spotlight, um, I am a little bit, just a little bit because of YouTube. But it's nothing like being an NFL player. You know, when you see all these people yesterday that, you know, are diehard fans that just want something from you you know it's a constant thing that is difficult and i can guarantee you that looking out there and seeing all those cowboy fans and knowing that i'm no longer a part of that group i'm sure is emotional and he kind of said i don't think i want to do this and that's what i believe happened i honestly do i you know I, we talk about it and say you know he checked out he, he, i don't mean to joke about it that has to be emotional that's like you just broke up with your girl, and here you are having to sit at a table with your girl. You know what I mean? You don't want to be sitting there. It's all this raw emotion and things. So, speaking of raw emotion, I'm going to go back to my roots. You know, I have stepped out of what I normally would do. What I normally would do is I would look at things and I would look at things from the, the side of a cap, cap, cup being half full. No, I'm not drunk, okay? Been working the workshop, though, with the epoxy, pouring the epoxy and stuff for Yolanda Fletcher. So um, I did have the respirator on, but still, some of those fumes could get to you anyway. But I'm trying to look at things with a cap, cup half full. Jerry Jones says, we are in better shape than we were last year. And I actually have to say, in some regard, he is right. I've said, having Dak Prescott there at the autograph signing show, saying his shoulder is fine, seeing him stand up and everything else, seeing him look happy and everything, you have to look at that and say, he's in good shape now. He's already throwing and working out with captain's workouts. From the standpoint of where he was this time last year, he's definitely in a better place. I will say our defense, as much as I wanted to get Bobby Wagner and Von Miller and things, we all want those shiny new pieces. But I'm going to say the fact that we brought back J. Ron Curse, where we had question marks all over the place at safety besides Donovan Wilson. We looked at that situation, man, we got to draft safety, man. We need a cornerback. You know, we, we need edge rushers. We need defensive linemen. We, need, we needed everything last year. 
And now you look at it and say, okay, our, our defensive backfield is a hell of a lot better than it's been in quite a while. I know y'all don't like Anthony Brown, but Anthony Brown is not a bad dude. And we have some young guys that we drafted this past year that have at least been in the classroom and gotten a little bit of experience that can go in there. Boss man fat and things. So you are right. The defense is in a better position. Even Van Der Esch played better in the second half of the season than he did the first half. And he didn't get hurt. So, you know, the price that you paid for him, it's not the worst thing in the world. And having these guys who practice there together, okay, that's cool. Do we have some holes? Yes. We, we definitely have a guard, a center. You worry about a swing tackle. You look at wide receiver. But you're not having as many holes as we had last year at this time. We didn't. Now, let's also look around the NFC. Because as much as we've seen all these mega trades and things, all these big you know, teams and juggernauts, I got to say, it's all happening in the AFC. You've seen a switch in talent from the NFC to the AFC. The fact that Devontae Adams is now with Denver is huge. It's huge. The fact that Russell Wilson is with Denver, I'm excuse me, not uh, Denver, the Raiders. The fact that Russell Wilson is with the Denver Broncos. So let, let's look at the landscape here. Of course, they're going to say the Cowboys are, are worse now than they were. I don't know that they're worse. Amari Cooper, I had a discussion when we were doing the live stream and things. The thing that's crazy is when you take receivers, and when I've done this, people say you're crazy. We look at Amari Cooper and we say, Dak can't live without Amari Cooper. But forget that Amari Cooper with Derek Carr was not doing jack. There was a reason why they got rid of him was because they thought he checked out. They thought it just wasn't working. Those first five, six games, he only had like 200 yards. And that was with Derek Carr, a guy that some of you would say, take him. He gets there with Dak. All of a sudden, his numbers, he caught the longest passes, okay, the longest completion percentage of his career with Dak. Not with Derek Carr, with Dak, Mr. Dink and Dunker, as they called him. You look at Randall Cobb. Randall Cobb in 2015 was a beast. But after that year, every year his yardage went down. He was nowhere near 1,000 yards. The last year that he was there with um, Aaron Rodgers, the MVP, he only had about 400 yards receiving. And he was down to like 10 yards per reception. He comes to the Cowboys for one year, and he has the highest yards per completion of his career at 14.9 yards and all of a sudden it's back up over 800 yards and had it not been for three penalties he would have had an additional three touchdowns that were called back he goes with Deshaun Watson a guy that a lot of you say oh I'll take Deshaun Watson over Dak and his yards per completion dropped by like four yards he even goes back with Aaron Rodgers who was the MVP, he's still like two and a half yards below what he was with Dak. And you can look across the board, Des Bryant thing. So, I'm not saying James Washington is going to be a thousand yard receiver, but if he's an 865 yard receiver, he's replacing the production we got last year from Amari Cooper. Huh. And as far as Cedric Wilson goes, you really look at Cedric Wilson and Michael Gallup as really the same guy because it was really Cedric Wilson or Michael Gallup. It wasn't really both of them playing that much together. Cedric Wilson got his opportunities because Michael Gallup was out. Now, Michael Gallup probably is not going to be ready to the middle of the season, but you've got other pieces that are there, and I think that we're going to draft a receiver, of course. So I'm looking at it from the standpoint of if they can take care of the offensive line, Cowboys are okay. The defense should be still pretty good. And if we can still, in that next wave of free agency, which is where Stephen Jones likes to find players, and quite frankly, 
J. Ron Curse was a guy we found on the cheap who had numbers that were as good as Buda Baker's. Brian Aguilar, free agent we picked up. Great numbers. So we might actually get some players that are good. But now let's just kind of look a little bit around. This, this video is getting kind of long. But let's look around the NFL and the NFC right now. We're not dealing with the AFC. The AFC is the juggernaut right now. Let's look at the teams that were the be best teams out there. And there's going to be turnover. A lot of the teams that were playoff teams last year won't be this year. Cowboys could be one of them. That's the way it goes sometimes. But do you look at Green Bay and say Green Bay Packers, now that Aaron Rodgers has got his contract and Devontae Adams is, is gone, that they're a better team? I don't think so. You look at Tampa Bay, yeah, they got Tom Brady back, but you know they're relying on a lot of guys that are getting up there in age. I know Namak and Sue's coming back. I know Tom Brady's coming back. But again, they're getting older. That's beginning to become an old team. And the rest of their division, New Orleans is probably the next best team because they've got a great defense. And they've got Jameis Winston. Meh. But, you know, they'll win some games, but I'm not sure I'm, like, scared to death of them. The Rams were a good team. They got hot at the right time. But now that they've been there together, you have an old, whole offseason for people to dissect what they were doing. I'm still not sold on Matthew Stafford, who is up there with 27 pick sixes with some of the all-time greats. He will, by the time his career is over, have the record for all, all time for pick sixes. I think he's only two away. I'm not sold on him being, you know, great. I can be wrong. I still say they're beatable. I think uh, the Cardinals, they're going to come back down. The 49ers, they got a great defense, a great young group, but I'm not sure if they hit their peak last year or not. They may come back down there, but I'm not going to say that I'm scared to death of San Francisco. And who else in the NFC do you look at and say, oh, you can't get past them? I'm not saying that we're great, but I don't see great in our conference. So from that standing, I'm probably the village idiot. If we had a couple of less penalties and maybe a couple of runs against the 49ers, we end up winning that game. It wasn't like we got blown out of the water 50 to nothing. Maybe it's not as bad as we think. That's going to be my take. All right, good people. I've got to see if I'm going to be up. I just did that pour about an hour ago. I got to wait four hours to do the next one. And I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to stay up for another three hours. Do it and then go to bed. As Jerry Jones says, deadlines make deals. I got a deadline. I need to get this thing done. All right, good people. I appreciate you as always. Thank you all for all the support. Thank you for checking out the video with my quarterback, Dak Prescott. Haters, ha, I don't give a rat's ass what you say. Say what you like. I don't care because you can't steal my thunder. That shit was good. Make sure you tell somebody you love. You love them tonight because you might not get a chance again. And God willing, I'll see you in the morning. Peace.